for being here. I put in a special order for the sun, so I'm really glad that that worked out. And you can thank me later on that one. You know, I know it was, it was tough to get motivated this week with the rain, um, but it's beautiful outside. Happy Friday, everyone. And I'm Amy Mosier. I'm the lead STEM coach for Workforce Central Career Center. And for those of you who may not be aware of STEM power, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And we're operating under a three-year Department of Labor grant here. We're sort of at a very exciting time in the grant because we are on sort of the, the back end of the grant and we're able to do some really innovative things that relate to STEM as well as you know, innovative entrepreneurial endeavors bringing forth these types of resources to job seekers. Whether or not you're actually looking to launch a business, it's a mindset, it's a new way of thinking that's really important we feel in this new economy. Welcome everybody, we're really excited to have this spectacular panel of resources and entrepreneurs here for the first time. We haven't done anything to this scope yet. We're really excited to have something new for our customers here. A lot of people come here to change their careers, as most of you are, uh, from a variety of backgrounds. So we think we're going to have an unprecedented mix of good information and advice and resources that you can use in the future. We want to uh, continue to have a version of this available for customers in the future as they come to us so that we can give people not just opportunities for employment at employers, but ways to start their own business. And we really think it's important, even if you don't end up starting your own business, to really take away from, from this kind of session and this kind of information an entrepreneurial mindset, which really goes a long way in succeeding in any type of work you might pursue. 30 seconds, identify your passion, value, and demand. Please. I get a little excited. Please. Please. The demand is what do you feel the new market is calling for that you bring to the table? So what is the demand? What do, think about, some of you may have a better sense of your target market than others. If you do have a sense of your target market, that might pop to mind, like this is what they need. Mm -hmm. If you're still identifying your target market, it might be left blank today. That's okay. It's okay. All right. Mike, take it away. And uh, three minutes, right? You know, no pressure. <laughs> I'm uh, very happy to be here uh, today. It's a great audience. It's great to see all you folks here on a Friday afternoon. And to, it, it is a great panel of resources that we have. The entrepreneurs are also going to be able to offer a lot of information. Uh, but let me tell you about the Small Business Development Center program. Uh, it's part of a, uh, the Small Business Development Center in our case is located at uh, Clark University right here in Worcester. And we provide free and confidential, yes I did say free and confidential, counseling and assistance to new businesses, expanding businesses, or financially troubled businesses. We provide assistance and training in a variety of different areas. Work with folks that have existing businesses that may be doing well financially that want to expand. Work with existing businesses that may be having some financial problems. Also work with folks that are thinking about either purchasing a business or maybe starting up a new business from scratch. And in those situations, we try to help people so that they can develop a basic feasibility in kind of test the idea, see whether or not it really seems to make sense or not. If after going through the analysis, it looks like it's a pretty good idea, normally we recommend to the client that, well, maybe they should forget about it and we'll look for a much better opportunity. The reason we state it that way is because through the years, we've seen way too many pretty good ideas that just don't make it in the law. However, if the idea actually has very good potential, then we can assist the client so they can develop a basic business plan, maybe even a loan proposal if they need financing for their venture. So even though we can't provide any financing at all directly through our program, we can do the next best thing. We can help folks so they can develop a business plan, a loan proposal, and package it together. Uh, and, and we provide the guidance and assistance. We don't write the plans, but we provide the guidance and assistance so that people can then um, bring that information, bring their proposal to a bank or a lending institution or some other financing source. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Tom Harold, I'm with the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Business Empowerment Center, also here in Worcester, and we've got several of our associates with what we call the Worcester Business Resource Alliance. It's a lot of good resources. We do collaborate with one another. Um, but in particular, what I'd like to tell you today is just about our mission and, and our center, what we do. They even steal some of the Clark students to help them out with some of the work that they do. We've got one actually right, uh, right there. Carter, you can stand up for us. Uh, 
Uh, like Mike said, we do have a uh, collaboration with Clark University's Graduate School of Management. It's a wonderful opportunity for grad students like Carter, who's working on his Master's in Finance, or MBA students, to actually get some hands-on learning and experience from entrepreneurs. And there's a lot of cool synergy that takes place when you pair a college grad student with an entrepreneur. As they get to understand the academic side and the entrepreneur gets to, to, gets to teach them the practical side of operating a business and all the day-to-day -day, uh, challenges that, are, that go along with that. We have three entities within the MLK Center. You know, uh, primarily what we do is uh, help small businesses. Uh, we do that through an incubation process. We have an incubation facility at our location where we help businesses uh, from, from all sizes start off and they go through a five-year program. And uh, the idea behind that is to grow them uh, to the point of profitability that they can graduate outside of the center and go pay full rent someplace else. Um, the other side is what we call micro-business development. And a little different than what uh, Mike does with the SBDC is we work with those startup businesses, uh, um, small businesses, uh, mom and pop shops that are around. It's the same concepts that, as, as large businesses, same practicality, same acumen required, and so forth. But that's the section that, that I'm responsible for. And what we do is we have five basic tiers of services. The first is what we call uh, the Business Leadership Academy, where we offer free classes. Uh, from everything from accounting to finance to operations management to uh, marketing and so forth. Uh, we have uh, uh, groups that we do also where we, where we pair off entrepreneurs and business owners in similar size groups, similar backgrounds. We call these micro-business alliance groups, MBA groups, uh, to be a play on that. Because what we do is we, it's a group accountability session where what we find is most small business owners face the same challenges. <coughs> <laughs> regardless if it's a, it's a shoe store, if it's a bakery, or if it's an auto dealership, whatever it might be. And it's dealing with uh, revenue, it's dealing with costs and, and expenses and so forth. But it's fun to watch how entrepreneurs actually interact with one another and they face the challenges and hold each other accountable. Um, we do empower women so we can sell sufficient through the entrepreneurship. So uh, the way that we accomplish this mission is by uh, providing education, consulting, um, Networking, connected, mentor as well. Great, great question. Um, and we have people who are, you know, for instance, inventory specialists that might cut across various uh, industries. Okay, uh, we have uh, a guy who is. I know there are some franchise people that are going to speak here. We've got a guy who is a uh, franchise uh, genius, as far as I'm concerned, because he originally worked for Marriott, uh, where he was the franchisor. He was writing franchise agreements and setting them up. And then later on in his life where he really made the money was when he went to work as a franchisee and he bought a lot of quick print shops. So you know, he worked both sides of the aisle, if you will. So any time I get somebody involved with a franchise thing, I try to uh, hook them up with, with him. Uh, I do want to say there were some great resources in this room. I am a little partial to the Clark folks, to Mike and Amy, being a Clark along myself, along with the other Amy, um, and a Clark parent, and so on. Uh, but there's great, you know, I want to go to the WPI session, sounds like a lot of fun, and, uh, and hear about some other things. What I do, what my company does, and then we'll get to this in a second, is I have a two-pronged firm, which is to uh, help small businesses, entrepreneurs especially, differentiate themselves from the competition. There are too many businesses out there, that's step one, too many businesses out there who say, ah, Joe's Plumbing, quality plumbing. Okay, well, how many of your competitors say, Bill's plumbing, crappy plumbing? Okay, that's not differentiating, saying value, quality, high service. Please don't say the lowest price. You're never going to make any money that way. Uh, so differentiating your business is one of the first, the, the first thing I work on with my clients. It takes less time than the major part, which I'll get to in a moment, but it's really important. If you don't have a niche and you don't differentiate your niche, then don't compete with Walmart. So that's... But ups and downs. Well, when Amy asked me to uh, do this, I, I feverishly put together a five-day seminar. Must <laughs> <laughs> read all those books. Uh, I'm gonna read all of them. So I some stuff. Then I, then I reread the sheet. It was, uh, it was five minutes. So uh, now, which is easy. It's much easier to pare things down than that too. So I've got this five-day seminar worked up for you. But you're gonna do most of it in five minutes. And I'm going to have to skip some stuff, so hopefully everybody's okay with that. Um, I think that uh, uh, the 
You know, one of the things that I keep hearing is, uh, you know, Marianne said, you know, I made, I made this decision, I want to do this thing, and, and, uh, and other people have been talking about it, talking about choices. And you also uh, had the great fortune of being around all these people at all these great services for you, and I started doing, um, wanting to have the desire for my own company and started doing that kind of thing, uh, I don't know, 30-something years ago. And uh, to have these kinds of resources here is just fantastic. And to get all these great stories, and you know, I, I would love to have sat down with David when I first started my business, and uh, and had you know the services that we heard uh, earlier, and the, and the resource, especially SCORE, and people like that that can just help you out that are retired. Those are great things. And uh, we did go to a Worcester bank and got a you know very small thirty thousand dollar loan, um, which you're right, it's a teeny tiny loan, and you know finally got lumped into a whole industry and they kicked it out. Uh, how do you? I resell telecom and energy. Really not fancy at all. So, how do you transition from uh, providing services to residential to then trying to provide those services for businesses? So, how, how, how can you transition from really going person to person, who you know, direct selling kind of kind of uh, business, to then trying to provide services to businesses? Can I just take a second? That um, you know, one of the things is. When you're looking at selling, you're identifying a need or you're providing a solution to somebody. That really isn't different whether you're doing a consumer level sale or you're doing a B2B type of sale. So those core skills that you have about selling are absolutely transferable to a business, business to business sales. You just have to identify how you do it. get familiar with the industry and understand those pain points and selling points. The same type of thing. This was a very powerful event because these opportunities are nowhere else. I haven't seen it anywhere else. I came all the way from out of state. I learned something very new. Everyone has an idea, but at least with this uh, venue, you had a whole plethora of different organizations that were here and willing to share if you wish to uh, receive whatever information they have. Well, we think it was a real success. It was a packed house here. We had uh, seven or eight speakers, all with di some different backgrounds and entrepreneur experience and running resources for people who want to start businesses. So we had some great stories about uh, successes, but also it helped people who were thinking about starting a business take a look at themselves and th questions they want to ask of themselves as to whether you know, this is something that's going to be for them. I think it was an amazing turnout, and I think it's really a reflection that you know people are in a new conversation with what's next for them in their career pathway. Whether they're looking to actually launch a business or not, people realize they need to really reinvent themselves in a way that they're thinking differently about how they're relating to themselves and their own capacities, how they're going to move forward, especially if they're in transition. So, good, good job. And thank uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to you again sometime in the future. Well, thank you, Henry, for coming out to Worcester, the heart of the Commonwealth, of course. And who knows if we can figure out a model that works for people here. We know there's 37 one stop career centers across the state, so hopefully it will have a rippling effect. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you so again. much.